Today's Bible study is titled Another Gospel, Why Paul? Part 1. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Galatians 1 verses 6 to 9. Let's dig into this. As you can tell from the tone of this writing, the Apostle Paul was a little ticked off regarding what was happening in the churches in the region of Galatia. After expending much energy teaching the gospel of the grace of God and establishing them therein, something happened that was derailing their faith. And what was it? It was the teaching of a law system, in this instance, the Mosaic Law via a Kingdom New Covenant perspective, and acts of the law, as somehow having a part in justifying men before or making them pleasing to God. Often Bible commentators refer to those teaching such in this time as Judaizers or legalizers, as if they were some special sect or cult. But rightly dividing the scripture can clearly identify who these were, as we'll see in continued discussion. Paul had very stern words as to what should happen to those preaching this other gospel. He said of those that would teach such, to let them be accursed, which in the Greek was anathema, one accursed, one doomed to destruction, eternally. And he didn't just say this just once, but twice. Why such a proclamation? What does a little law hurt? Later in this writing Paul answers that question when he asks the Galatians, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you, received you the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Galatians 3 verses 1 to 3. For in this dispensation of the grace of God, works of the law are works of the flesh, and there is no place for such under grace. In fact, Paul says such perverts the gospel. Those that were troubling them were a part of a system that had been temporarily paused, the leadership of which had promised Paul at the Jerusalem council that they would not trouble the Gentiles with this teaching. Acts 15 and Galatians 2. But some kingdom followers either did not know or were not abiding by that accord. Believer, it really matters. If you are part of a teaching that includes the law, or even some type of church law regarding salvation or God-pleasing behavior, then you have invited works of the flesh into your rule of faith and practice. The entirety of Paul's writing to the Galatians was to thwart such teaching. Read it for yourself. Note with today as a foundation. For the next several days we will address a question, why Paul? Essentially we will look at just why the glorified Lord Jesus Christ saw it necessary to encounter his enemy, Saul, save him by his grace, and send him with a message of grace to the Gentiles. Why Paul is a good question that all serious Bible students should ask and answer for themselves. Thank you for listening to today's Bible study.